Hi there everyone, I'm Shauna Randolph, spokesperson of the Edmonton Humane Society. Welcome to October 2013 Edmonton Humane Society podcast show. And as usual, we bring you the show from our beautiful facility in Northwest Edmonton. Coming up on this month's show, so many things as usual. How a therapy using specialized hand movements works to calm animals, basically making them easier to train. And how you can learn all about Tellington T-Touch here at the Edmonton Humane Society by taking a class. Also coming up a great video we made that's sure to inspire animal lovers to work at the Edmonton Humane Society. We'll also chat with our CEO about the opportunities here and an update on our Chicago boxcar kitten story that gripped so many hearts here and south of the border. You'll remember those adorable kittens who were stowaways on the Chicago train to Edmonton. We'll tell you what's going on with them. But first, the hot topic of the month, helping you with your dog on a leash, whether it be you trying to walk with it so that it's not pulling you, or when it's off the leash, trying to get your dog to come to you when you're calling it. These are two common problems that people call our behavior specialists with, and so we have a special class geared to deal with both of those issues. We're starting a new class, and with that coming up in the fall right now, I show you a very important video with some valuable tips to get you started. So one of the most common complaints that we hear from people or frustrations I guess in regards to their dogs is A, my dog pulls on leash and B, my dog does not come when I call it off leash. So we created a specific class um, to address both those issues. It's a group class and it's six weeks long and um, we help people tremendously with both of these issues. Um, one of the things that we do find the traditional traditional training methods of teaching loose leash walking focuses on punishing the pull rather than rewarding the follow with the loose leash. So the method that we choose focuses on rewarding the follow so that the dog actually does enjoy walking beside us, whereas a lot of the methods the dogs actually are pulling to get away from us because they're always getting jerked on the leash and that type of thing. There are tools out there that we know can do uh, severe physical damage to dogs. In addition to science has shown there's some of the tools that will cause emotional and behavioral side effects and so we really want to avoid those things like choke chains and prong collars and I do understand that people have a big powerful dog and they maybe feel they don't have any other choice but that's what we're here to do to show them that there are other tools out there that can help you give you just as much control but not have the same physical or emotional side effects so in the beginning stages we do use a lot of food rewards which science shows that's the number one way for an animal to learn and so so all I would do is I would start walking and just make a little attention getting sound and when the dog comes into the reward zone beside me or reinforcement zone as we call it we would mark it with our little clicker and give them a reward so right now Gracie's kind of walking nicely with me and I'm just going to reward that because I didn't even have to get her attention there we go um, and in so far as the off-leash recall, um, it's just it's a very extremely important thing to teach your dog because if we're ever in a situation, especially in an emergency, we need our dogs to come just like that. There could be a car coming, that kind of thing. And um, so we're happy to help people with that. So if we were looking at working on the recall process, um, the way we start is we choose a cue word that our dog would respond to and for my regular recall I always say come, my dog's name and come because I have three dogs. So in this case it would be Gracie come. So I just want her to start thinking that come is the best thing she's ever heard in her entire life. So I make it a big, big party with high value treats in the beginning every time I say that. Gracie come! That's a good girl. What a super girl you are. Very good job. Oh yes, good girl, Gracie. So that's basically a demonstration of what we call our regular everyday recall that everyone should have. But we also want to have something called an emergency recall for those emergency situations where maybe the dog sees a rabbit 
and they're running across the street in traffic and we've got to stop the dog. Um, so that is something that we also teach and it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. All of these things take time and practice and a little bit of patience, but it's absolutely possible for everybody. So the next loose leash walking and recall class is set for November the 6th. Again, it is a six week course. They fill up very quickly. So call right now to register at 780-491-3888. We also promote our classes on our social media sites, so follow us regularly on Facebook and Twitter and Google+, Instagram and YouTube. And we also make a point of keeping you entertained, engaged and educated. For example, these two next stories that are sure to warm your heart. The stowaway kittens from Chicago that ended up in Edmonton on a train without food or water. We'll update you now on those. And as well, how independent veterinarians often help us with some medical cases. Here you go. How old is she? She's two. She's Chanel, the sweet, gentle, and calm Shih Tzu mix that came to us about a week ago. She had recently been harmed by another dog and with that lost one eye. And the other one was in rough shape in our care. Because of all this, she was blind. She came into us with one eye having been removed already about three weeks previously. The other eye had been damaged at the same time. Uh, they, the veterinarians at that point were hoping to save that eye to, to keep her sight, uh, but it was pretty apparent at this point already that she was non-visual. She was fully blind, and it seemed like she was also having problems with that other eye as well. It wasn't just quiet sitting there blind. It looked like it was still pretty painful and, and hurting. One of the veterinarians in, in St. Albert actually has a real special interest interest in, in ophthalmology and eyes and he's very graciously uh, agreed to take a look at a few of our animals uh, over the, the last year or so here. So off she went to see Dr. Weens at Sturgeon Animal Hospital in St. Albert. His complimentary assessment determined that her second eye did need to be removed to give her the best quality of life. One of our surgeons performed that surgery. It went well and so did her dental cleaning and space surgery. Chanel was quick to bounce back and especially being blind. It's really amazing how quickly uh, some dogs are able to recover from even multiple surgeries at one time. She's a real friendly little girl. Uh, we, we all really liked her and we thought that she seemed to have already adjusted quite well to being blind in the first place. Uh, she was easy to approach. Uh, she loved and trusted everybody and she was just a, a wonderful a little girl. Chanel wasn't on the adoption floor long for just one day before being brought into a loving home with an EHS volunteer who fell in love with Chanel and adopted her and thought that she'd be a good fit with her other two small dogs at home. It's probably the first time either Chicago Joe or Boxcar Wilhelmina have been given a bath by a human and remarkably this bath on Thursday September 12th went very well. Good girl, Wilhelmina. And following that, a little playtime. It's a far cry from when they first came in on Tuesday, September 11th. Filthy, very timid, and extremely hungry and thirsty. An Edmonton man who works at a nearby warehouse yard had opened a large sealed train car that arrived at his company's land after it was part of a train from Chicago to Edmonton that arrived that day. When he had opened it, he was shocked to hear tiny mews. A bit of searching, and he found the pair cowering inside. He gently picked them up and brought them to us right away. Nobody knows how they got into the box car, and we're all so surprised that they were found alive. There was no sign of any food or water or dishes or anything inside. And at just one month old, we shake our heads in disbelief that they made it after being locked in that container for at least the five days it took the train to get here. The story is so amazing that our media line has been ringing off the hook from reporters even as far as in the United States covering it. Media outlet after media outlet like the Chicago Tribune. Um, I fostered probably over 100 animals during uh, the course of, of my time with EHS. They're now in the loving care of one of our regular foster parents, who's working diligently at socializing them. The kittens were so scared when they first came to us that it was hard to handle them without them hissing. And now we got the little nose clean. Yeah. 
they are starting to come out of their shells a little bit. Really, we're just focusing the, for the next couple weeks on um, getting them very accustomed to people coming and going and talking and handling and touching. They'll be in foster care for a while, needing much more socialization, and they're far too tiny to be spayed or neutered, which is standard before adoption. We'll let everyone know when they'll be available to start their life in whichever Edmonton home they'll end up in. The kittens are still doing well in foster care, and we will update you on our social media sites when they are old enough and well enough to be ready for adoption. Stay with us. Coming up right after this short break, our success story section. This month, a visit from a cat who first came to us two years ago with chemical burns all over his body. Don't worry, though. He is doing fantastic, and you will meet him with his new owners coming right up. The Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. Welcome back. And now as part of our monthly success story section, a visit from a cat we called Diesel. This was a tabby who came to us with severe chemical burns all over his body two years ago. Take a look at what he looked like then. Suffering from those burns likely caused from diesel fuel that somehow got on the poor little guy. Some of our staff members, as you can see, were quick to give him a bath and dry him off, as we also see him working diligently to clean himself. Once he was well enough, he was placed up for a and was scooped up by Angela Young who took him into her family. The two of them join us here now and well Diesel's a little kind of timid. He's thinking yeah. why am I not in my house? Thank you Angela for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. So how's he doing? He looks beautiful. Oh, yes, he is doing awesome. He's a good fit to our family. He's really settled in. He's a perfect member of the family. And you have uh, other pets as well so he blends in quite well. Yes he does. We have one of the cats and a dog so sometimes it's quite fun around around our house. Let's go back to when you did adopt him about two years ago. What drew you to him? I was actually looking on Facebook and I saw your video clip of him and I saw him and fell in love with him immediately and I actually dropped everything and came right away and I said I want to see Diesel and I adopted him right then and there that afternoon. Wow the power of social media yeah. and adopting that's so good <laughs> and obviously from the beginning you knew that he was meant to be with you. Yes yes I could tell just by looking in his eyes he reminded me of another cat that we actually had and I'm like I knew the temperament of this type of cat he's got a bit of Maine Coon in him mm -hmm. so we had another Maine Coon and they're just beautiful cats to have around yeah big beautiful yes yeah fluffy <laughs> and did you have to do anything special with him when you first took him home when we first took him home he did have the cuts and sores and everything we kept him in the bathroom by himself for the first couple days and um, we didn't actually have to do anything, just try to keep the wounds clean and everything. And he took care of that basically himself. Yeah. And um, no, we went for the vet visit the week after and the vet actually said that his hair probably wouldn't grow back. Oh, but Diesel proved him wrong. Uh, yeah, a little different than that <laughs> yeah. thought. He is so fluffy yeah. and he's just so, I just can't get over how beautiful he was because I took that video when he first came in and he looked like he was just suffering so much yeah. and we still don't know how the diesel fuel no. got spilt on him. We'll never know, but no. the point is he's with su such a lovely family. Yes. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just talk about adopting from the Edmonton Humane Society. Obviously, you were drawn to us by that video and, and just thoughts for anybody watching. Well, um, we, I love coming to the Humane Society. We actually come here a couple of times and looked around and 
I would definitely recommend coming to the Humane Society if you can, because you never know if you're going to find a lifelong mem member of your family here. So Diesel is a member of the family, and we're glad that we came here and got him. So. We're so glad that you adopted him. And whether it be an animal like Diesel with quite a background story or just someone with their own individual not as well, dramatic, yes. they all have their own stories. They're all wonderful pets, and you help to encourage others. Thank you so much Thank for coming. You. Thank you. And now, using a specialized therapy to help calm shelter animals. It's called Tellington T-Touch, and it's really good as well to helping animals with behavior problems. One of our dedicated volunteers does this regularly on our shelter animals and watching this next video may even inspire you to learn how to do it on one of your animals. Let's start with you Patty. You've been doing this for quite some time. Yes, I've been doing um, Tellington Tea Touch now for almost four years. And really in a nutshell, just so that people can understand quickly, um, what exactly is it? Telecton Tea Touch is a very gentle and respectful um, form of touch that we use for our companion animals. It's very gentle, um, circular type touches uh, that we do. The Telecton Tea Touch works on a cellular basis. Um, it wakes up the cells in the body and it builds new um, neuron passages so that the animals can learn and change behaviors. Any animal um, can take advantage of it. I, f I have found actually when I start doing tea touch on a dog or a cat that they become addicted to it. It's very calming for the animals and um, relaxes them and as a person doing the work you also relax. Let's talk about some of the education uh, classes that we offer like this one. Why do you feel this one is so important to offer the public? I feel that uh, Tellington Touch is incredibly important to offer our, our public and uh, to offer the people in our community because it gives people a method of communicating with their animal that uh, helps them calm down, helps them relax, helps them learn, and helps them uh, move into a space where they can become a, a better companion animal uh, for those people. It's therapeutic for the animal, it's therapeutic for the person, and uh, I myself have used it in many situations, behavior-wise. Ember used to like to eat cats. Uh, we, uh, Not literally, I hope. <laughs> no, she, a lot. she, yes, she would, she would chase, and she would become very highly aroused. And um, Patty helped her with that, and just helped retrain her brain to be relaxed in those scenarios. The T touch helps with body awareness, and it helps slow the animal down and bring them to a thinking place. So it helps in training as well, not just in behavior. So you have experienced firsthand. Oh, massive benefits to my own animals, absolutely. And, and Patty has been a wonderful and a great partner in that for me for the last couple of years uh, as we've developed this program and gone through this together. So a really relaxing thing to do on a Saturday yes. at the Edmonton Humane Society. People will, and their pets, will leave very relaxed and, and feeling very rejuvenated. I'm absolutely. Sure. Yes. There's, there's medical benefits, there's behavioral benefits, and it's not just for the animals, it's for the people as well. Yes. Well, yeah. thank you, you two. Thank, well, thank you, you very much, Shana. So to sign up to take our T-Touch class, just call our education department at 780-491-3504. The next classes will take place on October 12th and November the 9th. Don't go away. Coming up right after this break, we take you into our shelter store, Bingo's Pet Shop, to show you all the new trendy pet items available. And we'll show you a video that's sure to inspire you or someone you know to work here at the Edmonton Humane Society. Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. Real men love football. Real men love power tools. Real men love trucks. Real men love cats. Cats can bring even the most masculine guy some tenderness. 
The Edmonton Humane Society. There's a pet for everyone. I like working at the Edmonton Humane Society because every day is different. Uh, you don't know what types of animals are going to come in the door. It's a really good thing to get uh, a lot of hands-on experience with these animals and right away if they come in the door and they need our help we can we can go right into doing that. It's very interesting and it's very exciting and um, knowing at the end of the day when I go home that I have helped one or two or three animals it's a wonderful feeling. I like working at the Edmonton Humane Society because I have fabulous co-workers and I like seeing all the families that are completed every day. When the families come in and they start viewing all the animals and then they find one that they fall in love with and they, we get to see them through the entire process from the moment they come into the building to the moment they go home and that's my favorite part of my job. I really enjoy working here because you get to work with a variety of different dogs and it's something I've always wanted to do. Nothing is more rewarding than getting to see a dog that comes in very fearful, work with it, have it make progress and go out onto the adoption floor and find its new home. There's a lot of support here at the shelter uh, such as compassion fatigue training. Additionally, the staff themselves are all very supportive whenever you're having a rough day. There's someone always there for you. What a good boy. He's a good boy. I like working with the Edmonton Humane Society because I get to help uh, people with their companion animals. You really get to know the dogs in the daycare, you get to know their personalities, um, you get to help the ones that need to be you know a little bit more outgoing. Sometimes they come in a little bit on the shy side and they kind of you see them blossom into this really friendly social dog. We have some really great clients. They appreciate everything we do for them and, and, and it's great. So does that video inspire you to work here? We certainly hope so. It doesn't though cover all the different types of admin jobs and there are so many of those. Our CEO Stephanie McDonald has been the head of the Edmonton Humane Society for more than a decade. I sat down with her recently to talk about the attraction to work here and to go over all of those administrative possibilities. Stephanie, we have about 100 employees here and there's so many opportunities. There absolutely is, Shauna, from you know being right directly with the animals and giving day-to-day -day husbandry all the way up to raising the money that we need in the shelter. So from very entry level all the way up to the uh, professional level. And that video we just showed is really focusing more on the front line, really direct interaction with the animals. Administration folks, though, get a lot of interaction with the animals as well. Well, they're very lucky. They get to bring their pets to work, of course, but but, uh, you know, on the shelter side, they absolutely do. They can hear about the stories, and sometimes we all want to go and meet the animal that we have successfully rehabilitated. There's plenty of opportunity for, for some good hugs throughout the day, or, you know, if you want to take a quick break, you can take a dog for a walk through the, around the pond. And, you know, in the administration side, sometimes that's not the side that people are attracted to. They think that it's really great to go onto the shelter side and provide the day-to-day -day care. That's hard work, though. That's really hard work, and, and the administration side they're part of the heart as well definitely and that's what a lot of people don't understand so mm -hmm. we have a wide variety of jobs uh, ranging from uh, veterinarian care to accounting that's correct and humane educators we've got a professional teacher that runs our humane education division kids learn all about responsible pet ownership how to be kind and how to be, grow up and be really good animal citizens what is it that you really want the public to know about working at the Edmonton Humane Society and working in an animal shelter environment it's challenging Shauna it's very challenging but it's about resiliency but not just from the animal side because we are always we're always amazed at how the animals are resilient but so are the people because we're faced with sometimes the tragedies but we also see the successes so it's kind of the full circle the full spectrum it is an extraordinary place to work I think most of us feel very honored and privileged to be able to have the opportunity to make a difference with all, so many animals each and every year and your leadership is so comprehensive and even from just checking in with how everyone is doing up to putting together very important seminars for the staff like compassion fatigue absolutely and you know we look at 
at ways to develop leaders. Sometimes we uh, promote people that are still junior, but we worked very hard to cultivate them, teach them, give them the tools so that they get up to a high star performance level. And you've been here a decade now and you've seen all sorts of different jobs and you've helped to create new opportunities as well. Well, that's too, that's very true. Um, when we were at the old shelter, 20, 23 to 30 staff and we wore multiple hats and times it was not uncommon for me to be a, in scrubbing the kennels and, and sometimes when we had uh, short sh staff shortages, we'd have the volunteers working side by side and, and I've even seen accounting in there even though they're usually huddled behind their computers making sure all of the money is counted for, um, have also been they're working with us. When there's a disaster that strikes, we look at everybody's skill set and you know we launch out to try to provide the best support we can for, for disaster management. So there's always something going on here. I mean, it's really a triage center and it's not for the faint of heart and it's not for one that likes to have the same old, same old because it is an incredibly diverse uh, organization with so much change happening all the time. And uh, so you, there's no opportunity to actually get bored. Oh yeah, definitely. You don't get bored. Absolutely. And so just check the website, EdmontonHumaneSociety.com, because the opportunities are posted there frequently. That's right. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Shauna. Every month, we take you into our shelter store, Bingo's Pet Shop, to show you all the new and trendy pet care-related items and all the cool things for humans as well. Here's a look for this month. Nadine, we're in the fall. Uh, a lot of need for people to occupy their pets indoors. We Absolutely. always advocate cats staying indoors whenever possible. Yep. Um, so especially in the warmer months, let's talk about some of the things that you can do. Well, this product's been around for quite a long time, but it just came to me. At, at, we started using it here in the shelter, and with that, people started getting really curious about it, and it's an awesome way to entertain your cat during the day. Uh, not all of them are easy to get at, because you just put the food inside those two tubes and the long ones there um, they have to really dig their paws in there to get it out. Yeah so it's really interactive yeah, hence the name interactive feeder which yep. is just great. Uh, good for cats so that they have something to do. We always like them to be uh, active and, and stimulated for their minds. So yeah and it super. works all day long toy. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, okay this one is so cool. I, I press it and you can't hear it as a human. A squeaky toy. Yep. It's great. It is at a frequency that dogs can hear not us so it works great for those uh, dogs that love squeakers but the owners that don't. Called Here Doggy. No more annoying squeaky toys. Yeah. And it comes in different styles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seamus, as you can see right now in this video, loves it and he can hear it and, and we can't. So, yes. Yeah. That, that's Absolutely. really good. Absolutely. A Halloween costume. Yes, it is uh, that time of year again and I did try to find some really cute costumes that don't interfere with the dog as much as some of them that out there do. Because our stance really on Halloween costumes are that first of all don't put it on a pet if it doesn't want to don't force yes. it. yes always make sure that they are supervised exactly. when they're wearing it and the big thing is make sure they're safe so that it mm -hmm. doesn't inhibit their movement or that they can't get stuck on something make sure they can breathe and these fall into that absolutely yeah and and really uh, they're simple nice ones like a, a wiener dog that's really cute <laughs> we got quite a few cute ones this year uh, like I said they're safe for the animals uh, there's not too much to interfere with the dogs thing like it's just like wearing a sweater yeah yeah, yeah. so come to the Edmonton Humane Society and get your Halloween costumes for your pets another thing that we're doing again this year the entertainment coupon book yeah we are selling them till uh, December 31st they're $40 and the profits go to the shelter or you can buy them online and uh, support us as well so through our website you can do it no through the entertainment oh through book. entertain and yes. then click on Edmonton Humane Society and then that's who yeah you can from. support us that way yeah and there's really good coupons in here for things like eating out and, and recreation and that. So you betcha. Really, really good. We appreciate all the support. And Nadine, we talk about it. We just need to remind people, you do not own this store. No, we are part of the shelter. Uh, it's just another department and all the profits made from here go directly back into the shelter operations. So you buy cool things and you help the animals at the same time. Absolutely. Thanks, Nadine. Thanks, Shauna. So now we're at the end of our October 2013 Edmonton Humane Society podcast show. Before you go, though, we do want to remind you to please think of our shelter animals and donate however you can. 
Being a nonprofit charitable organization, we greatly depend on donor support to care for about 13,000 homeless animals each year. Please just visit our website for how you can donate. And thanks to everybody who does support us. Thanks so much to Catch Can for sponsoring this show. That company is committed to sustainable development by protecting and preserving the land and water. Thanks to Evan Adams for his technical directing time and labor to bring this show to you and for Shaw Television for airing our show on their station at no cost. The only news magazine show produced by and for an animal shelter. In the meantime, before you see us on our next show in November, follow us on our social media channels. We will keep you engaged. Thanks for watching. See you next time.